This is problem 5-59. It's on page 306. What's shown on the figure is a cantilever beam connected to a wall with a few loads on it. One is a distributed load that is 60 kilonewtons per meter. Another is a 30 kilonewton load that is 2 meters uh, out from the, the wall, and then the distributed load continues beyond the 30 kilonewton force by one meter. Uh, then there are two more meters out on the beam until the load at the end of 20 kilonewtons. The first thing I did is calculate the reactions. Let's call this point A. So there's a moment reaction as well as a force reaction. So to get the force reaction first, some forces in the y direction should come up to zero. I didn't call it RA, I just called it A. So A is acting upward, all the other loads are acting downward, so minus 60 kilonewtons per meter multiplied by 3 meters worth minus 30 kilonewtons uh, point load minus 20 kilonewtons in the other point uh, load. And so A comes up to 230 kilonewtons. So now we know the force reaction at the wall. That's how hard the wall has to pull up on the beam to keep it from accelerating downward. Now, of course, that causes a couple. So we have to sum moments in order to figure out how large of a moment the wall has to apply. Now, you'll notice I've drawn the moment in the positive direction. Okay? And, and, but in, uh, since I'm taking uh, the positive direction to be counterclockwise always, well then what that means is I have to put in a negative uh, moment here at A. Okay? So I've drawn it this way. Alright. So then, um, let's see, we've got 60 kilonewtons times 3 meters. That's going to cause a moment, so 60 kilonewtons per meter times three meters worth. The moment arm for that is at a meter and a half from the wall because the center of the reactant or the resultant from that distributed load is going to act at the center of the distributed load. Now, of course, that's not the only thing that causes a moment. There are also these two point loads. We have to take them into account as well. So minus 30 kilonewtons times two meters. Uh, minus 20 kilonewtons multiplied by a half a meter. Okay. So solving for the moment at A, I'll just write it over here. The moment at A is a negative 430. So let's just do it this way. 430 uh, kilonewton meters. So there's the moment reaction at the wall as well as the force reaction. Okay, so now let's try to create the shear in kilonewton and moment diagrams. Let me get a little more space for the shear. Should be fine. X in meters. The shear begins at the wall at a value of 230 kilonewtons. We know that because we know the value of the shear here. And that's how hard the wall is pulling up. So if the wall is pulling up that hard, let's take a short segment. If the wall is pulling up that hard, well then the shear has to be pulling down with an equal and opposite force for the uh, segment to stay in equilibrium. So we know that the shear is a positive 230 kilonewtons. Now this pin seems to be running out of ink, so I'll switch colors. Now the distributed load continues to remove the need for shear. Because notice the distributed load is doing the same thing the shear load is doing. So it's, the shear load doesn't have to be as large in order to compensate for the reaction at A. And so basically what happens is the load, the shear load, moves down as we move along the beam. So how far does it move down? Well, if it's 60 kilonewtons per meter and we have 2 meters worth, well then that's 120 kilonewtons. So if you take 120 kilonewtons from 230, uh, let's see, actually, let me orient this with the thing. There we go. So 
there's the 230, subtract 120 kilonewtons. At this point, you should come down to 110 kilonewtons. Okay. Well, at that point, notice we've got a 30 kilonewton load. So that means that the shear is relieved even farther in the amount of 30 kilonewtons. So it comes down, the shear comes down to 80 kilonewtons. 30 kilonewtons of load, it does not have to apply. So it moves from 110 down to 80, and then continues on its way down. So for one meter, it'll continue down 60 newtons. So this has to come down to 20. So my scale's not very good, but there it is. There's the 20 kilonewtons. And then finally, the shear is constant until you get out to the 20 kilonewton load that takes over from the shear, once there's no more beam. Okay, so there's the shear diagram. Now let's create the moment diagram. It's in kilonewton meters. Okay. And I'm going to move the axis way up here because notice that the initial moment is a negative moment, right? The initial moment's a negative moment, and so we know it's going to begin down here. In fact, the moment begins at negative 430 kilonewton meters. And you notice all this silly a line, there we are. So, uh, you'll notice we have only positive area, that means this is going to approach the axis, it's going to move up along the entire path, and of course we hope that it ends up at zero, because there's no more beam after that. If it's not zero, we've done something wrong. So, let's see if we can figure out the magnitude of the moment. Well, so, let me use other colors to indicate this. So the first area we need to add up is this area. So this area would be equal to, to oops, 230 plus 110 over 2. That's the average height. Multiplied by the width. Multiplied by 2. So let's see. 2 are going to cancel mathematically. You'll end up with uh, what, 340. Okay. So if we move up from negative 430 by 340, then that means that the moment has to go to uh, negative 90. That's the wrong place. Let's try that so much. The moment has to go to negative 90 kilonewton meters. And it's going to go up. Notice we're adding area quickly at the beginning. So it's going to change quickly at the beginning and more gradually toward the end. So this is concave down. Okay. Not only that, but then, since this is first order, we know this will be second, uh, a second order curve. Okay. The slope of this curve changes suddenly from 110 down to 80. It still slopes upward, but not at as steep an angle. Now my drawing's not very good. Let me try one more time. I need concave down, but I also need a nice steep angle approaching that point. There we go. So the, the slope is going to go from 110 down to 80, which is still a decent slope, but it's not as large as it was. So now if we add up the area beneath this portion of the curve, that will tell us how much the moment changes. Well, let's see, so 80 plus 20 over 2 multiplied by the distance, which is 1, would give us, what, 50? Right? So 50, if we add 50 to, to negative 90, we come up to uh, negative 40. Notice that this is discontinuous. Then what? Well, then we finally got the rest of this area to add up. And that's pretty easy because it's 20 multiplied by 2 is 40. And so we'll come back to 0. And notice something about this. Since this is constant, this is first order. In other words, it's just a straight line. Whereas these two segments are second So we'd like to describe these seg segments in a little more detail. The first order line is pretty straightforward, but the second order curves, we need a, some math there. So let's, let's take care of that part. All right, we've got our shared moment diagrams. So for the section where x is between 0 and 2 meters, I'm going to work with this first bit here. Okay. The shear as a function of position would be negative 60x, because I know the slope. 
here has to be negative 60. It is 60 kilonewtons per meter. But then I need the, the offset to work also, right? So at an x of 0, I need to get a shear of 230 of it. So at an x of 0, I need to get a shear of 230. So it's pretty easy to see what the constant should be in that equation. Uh, let me work through this. I'm going to save some space here. And I'll work through the, the segment from, uh, what, from 2 meters to 3 meters. So we'll deal with that in just a minute. Oops, not zero. Two meters. And those are not C's, those are comparisons. Okay, so anyway, now to get the moment, the moment is the integral of shear. And so if we were to integrate this, well then that would be negative 60x squared over 2 plus 230x plus some constant of integration. Okay? So now we need to know the value of that constant. Well, we can plug in a few different places. The easiest is at x equals 0. Because at x equals 0, these terms go away. We should get negative 430. So that means this constant is negative 430. So there's our moment as a function of position. And you can verify it. If you plug in a position of 2, well, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 over 2 is 2. 2 times 60 then is 120, so this is a negative 120. Okay, negative 120 plus 2 times uh, uh, 230 is going to be 460 minus 430. So basically we just get 30 from that and uh, what? Negative 9, which is exactly what we observed, right? That's the moment at x equal 2 meters. So we know this equation is correct. And to simplify it, I guess we could just write a negative 30 there. So there's the shear as a function of position, there's the moment as a function of uh, position. Let's do the same thing for the segment from 2 to 3 meters. In that segment, the shear as a function of position would be negative 60x plus some constant, maybe a positive or negative constant, we don't know yet. Then we could choose to plug in either x equal 2 meters or x equals 3. It doesn't really matter which one we plug in. We know we should get either 80 or 120, excuse me, 80 or 20. Notice you have to be careful. Between 0 and 2, really I'm saying to the left of 2, whereas here I'm saying to the right of 2, because there's actually two values of the shear at x exactly equal to 2. Okay, so that's why I don't write greater than or equal to. I'm strictly saying on either side. Okay, so on the right-hand side, just to the right here, the value of the shear is 80. So anyway, when you figure out the value of the constant, it comes out it's negative 370. If you plug in x equal 2 or x equal 3, you'll find this works. You'll get the value at x equal 2, you get 80, and at x equal 3, you get uh, 20. So that works out. And then if we want to integrate this, shear, or well, sorry, moment is integral of shear dx. Well, how do we integrate this? Well, it's just negative 60x squared over 2 minus 370x plus some constant of integration again. Looks a lot like this, just with a different constant from the first order equation. Okay, so evaluate at the limits. We know at one limit the uh, moment is negative 90, at the other it's 40. And notice this curve is discontinuous in the sense that it's broken, but it's the same value at each point, unlike here. Okay. So anyway, evaluate at uh, uh, x equal 2 or x equal 3. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> you can compute the value uh, of the uh, constant and it looks like that constant came out to negative 370 as well. That threw me off for a minute because I thought I'd made a mistake since the constant was negative 370 there. To make sure, I used uh, a value of x equal 2 to find this. To make sure, we'll check, uh, we'll check both, why not? Moment of 3 equals negative 60. Well, let's make that negative 30 so we can avoid some math later. Times 
3 squared, which is 27, minus 370 times 3, uh, less 370, so really that's 370 times 4. I can't do this in my head, I don't have a calculator, so you should pause the video at this point, try it, and see what you get. But you should get, at a moment, uh, or at a, a position of 3, you should get a moment of negative 40. You can verify the moment at 2, so this should be negative 40. And is it equal to that? That's what the question mark means. Let's plug in x equal 2. Uh, at that point, we've got uh, negative 30 multiplied by 2 squared less uh, 370 times 2, but there's another, right? There's a constant, so times 3. That just happens mathematically in this case. You should get negative 90. My question is, do you? When I did it, I, that's what I got. So uh, plug that into your calculators and make sure that's what you get. But other than that, we're finished with the problem. Here's the moment as a function of uh, x. Okay, so I guess we can make that a 30 instead of 60 over 2. Notice there's nothing really interesting to do here. There's nothing terribly difficult. If the moment were to cross the axis at some point, we would want to find that crossing. And so we'd have to use the moment equations to do it. In this case, it doesn't cross the axis, so we're finished.